you're new to thick lip mullet fishing, you might think that float fishing for them is tremendously difficult. And you have to spend a lifetime of fishing to even have a chance of consistently catching decent ones. I'd like to sell you a different vision of mullet fishing, and that is that mullet are for everybody. Everybody can catch them, and with a sound set of tactics, a bit of patience and your powers of observation, there's no reason why you shouldn't start catching big mullet on the float today. So up until four or five years ago, I did a bit of mullet fishing here and there, but it wasn't until I met my mate Lawrence and started float fishing for thick lips that it became my favourite method of targeting them, and one of my favourite methods of angling full stop, I love it. Uh, I don't go so much for the classic mullet environment, such as harbours and rivers. I prefer to fish the coast if I can. And here on the north coast of Cornwall, the best time to get out on the coast and target decent mullet is winter into early spring. So most of my tactics and approach are based around fishing these kinds of environments at this time of year. But they'll adapt just fine into other situations, providing you scale the tackle to suit and make any tactical adjustments you need to suit the venues you're fishing. So where better to start things off than where I caught my first mullet when I was about 13. This is a spot called Salt Cove on Crantock Beach, the south side of Pentire Headland near Newquay. That's the Gownal Estuary over there. It's where I do a lot of my mullet fishing today even. Uh, I didn't hook that first one on the float. Uh, I foul hooked it on a bass plug, but still, it was my first one and it's stuck in my memory. But of course, spinning rods and plugs are not really what you want to be using for thick lip mullet. So let's have a look at the sort of tackle you should be using. All right, so this is the rod that I use. It's a Drennan Specialist Float 13 foot. And this is the kind of thing that I would advise going forth when you're starting float fishing for mullet. Uh, anything too stiff and you're gonna bust your fish off on the strike or break them off when you're playing them. Anything too soft and the fish is gonna boss you around. So something in between a carp rod and a match rod in power is gonna see you right most of the time. A uh, little bit of extra length can help, like a 13, 14 foot rod helps with keeping your line off the water when you're fishing in difficult currents. But a shorter rod, like 11, 12 foot, is fine if you're fishing at close range in calmer water. It's up to you, really. Once you're really into it, you can have different rods for different occasions if you really want to. But a sort of 13 foot specialist rod is a good all-rounder. So this is the reel I'm using. It's an Okuma Polzar. 4,000 size. Most important things for me about reel is it has reasonable line lay and then it has a back one function because that's how I play my fish. I don't play them off the drag and I'll explain why later. So I don't really tend to spend a lot of money on reels. They're just there to do a job for me. So I don't favor going too fancy or spending too much money. Anything basic that's um, serviceable will do. These I fill up with eight pound Daiwa sensor line. I used to use six pound, but I used to pop the odd fish off on the strike, but using eight pound, I've never really had a problem since. Daiwa sensor is a pretty old school line, but most importantly, it's very reliable and you know what you're getting and it inspires confidence, which is really important with mullet fishing. So these are the floats that I use 90% of the time. These are loafer style floats and I carry a few different sizes of them. I tend to use the largest one the most because most of my fishing's in rougher conditions or, or water that's ruffled a lot by wind. If it's a little bit calmer, I'll go down to this one, the sort of medium size, which improves sensitivity. And if it's really calm and clear and the mullet really spooky, sometimes this little guy can make the difference. Uh, it has done for me on a few occasions. So I attach my floats top and bottom using float caps. It's a method my mate Lawrence showed me. This makes the float fully adjustable so you can change depth on the fly without having to cut or retie anything. You can ballast your float with shot, or a lot of people these days are using sliding weights fixed between two rubber stops. It's a, a method from the freshwater world that's crossed into mullet fishing, and that's very handy. Some people use traces, like they'll tie a swivel and attach a trace that way. Uh, I tend to fish straight through, but it's all personal preference there. So, hooks. This is what I'm using 90% of the time. Camazan B983 in size 8. Fantastic little hook, landed lots of good mullets for me. You can go smaller if you really want to, if you're, you're having problems with small fish, but I tend to stay with the larger hook because really I'm only interested in catching the bigger ones and uh, want, if I do get one on, I want the best chance of landing it, so I tend to stay with a size 8. I'll even go up to a size 6 sometimes if I feel like there's a bigger fish there. Aside from your rod, reel and terminal tackle, the only other bits you really need are a landing net, preferably one with a long handle and knotless mesh, a bucket for mixing your ground bait in, a really good set of Polaroid glasses, that is important and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Get yourself a, a nice little weigh bag or a weigh sling, a set of scales. Get yourself a few loaves of bread and uh, away you go, you're ready to start fishing.
there we go. Beautiful winter mullet, about four and a half pounds, caught on float tactics. But for really good scrap, there was surge coming all down the river and he was using it to his advantage. He got round a rock at one point. Fortunately, one of my mates was on hand to uh, scare it round the corner and get it back into a, a position where we could fight it and net it from. So delighted to have not been on my own when I hooked this one. Gave a, I was fishing um, right on the bottom with the float, so it gave a lift bite. And uh, as soon as I struck into it, it flanked. I could see it was a, a decent fish, and uh, from then it was battle on, and it really did battle well. So I'm gonna put him back now because he, he uh, well deserves his freedom. This one, he's a, a real good sport. All right, so I'll give you a demo of how I make my float rig up. First thing I do is I put a little red rubber float cap on. Line through the float, slide it up. Then I just roll the float cap down the top of the float. There you do it. That holds the top of the float in place. Then I use a little black float cap, slightly smaller than the red one. Slide that up the line. And that holds the bottom of the float in place against the line. And now that float is fully adjustable. You can slide it up and down, which is great for adjusting on the fly. Next thing I do is tie the hook on. Once the hook's tied on, I add my shot. I tend to do this about five, six inches, maybe a little bit more, away from the hook. This float takes four SSG shot, so I just tend to pinch them on, and I add them all in the same spot. So this setup really suits the way I like to present my bait when I'm float fishing for thick lips. I want my bait to be as close to the bottom as possible, preferably skimming along it. Someone once told me that the biggest fish sit at the bottom of the shoal and I've never seen any reason to doubt that knowledge since and I continue to tailor my approach to targeting those fish. I like my shot to be just off the bottom, that way I can see a lift bite, I can see any kind of pull away bite, or I can see any weird little lateral movement of the float that you sometimes get when you're float fishing for mullet and I can respond to them quickly. So as we all know, the classic mullet bait is uh, this stuff, white bread. But how do you go about putting that on the hook for the best results? Well, my default method is to take a triangle of bread, like that. Put my hook in the wide end and fold it over and pinch it around the eye. So it forms like a cone, like that. The idea with this is the mullet comes, starts eating away at the fluff, and eventually it finds a hook. Very simple, works well for me. Now if that's not working, what I'll sometimes do is this. I'll take a, a rectangular strip of bread, like that, put my hook Went down and fold the bread around the shank, like so, making a special effort around the eye. So it sits like that. Mullet comes and eats the fluff at the top. Hook hopefully finds the bottom lip. There's other ways you can put the bread on, but those are the two main ways that I use. Uh, if one doesn't work, the other generally, generally might. <laughs> I prefer the, the sort of cone method as it, it tends to stay on the hook a little bit better. Um, but the other one sometimes can be more, you can get a better bites to fish ratio.
So I mentioned before that a good pair of Polaroid sunglasses are really important pieces of kit for mullet fishing. And they absolutely are, they're essential. In mullet angling, the two most important weapons you have are your eyes and your brain. And if you can enhance your vision, that's going to help you better understand what it is that you're seeing. So much of your success in mullet fishing is based around recognising opportunity. Knowing the difference between fish that are feeding and potentially catchable, or fish that are going to be not interested and not worth wasting your time on. But of course there's always the option to create your own opportunity through the use of ground bait. So to better understand the role of ground bait in mullet angling, let's go over to my mate Lawrence who's going to show us how to mix up a bucket of ground bait and give us some ideas on how to use it to make sure it's working as efficiently as possible for us. So we've got about two, two loaves of cheap white bread in there. And I like to fill it up with about half a bucket full of water. And then I've always got a spare third or fourth loaf. If it's too wet and sloppy, then I'll add a few extra slices just until I, until I get the right consistency, which that is, to be fair, that's pretty nice. So it's gonna create a lovely sort of cloud. See, there's still a few few bits in there, a few, a few crusts. So I want to um, want to try and get rid of as much as that as I can. But that's that's actually looking pretty good. I used to use the krill. I think it was whole krill extract, but I think it's been discontinued, and that was just filth. That was disgusting. That stuff. But um, this is the next best thing. Like I said, whether or not it makes a difference or not, because I think it's just a confidence boost more than anything which is what you need in mullet fishing. That's beautiful. So what I'm doing, I'm just throwing bread, all this bread in amongst all the bladder rack we've got down here, and all the little nooks and crannies, because I know, sort of before high water, about an hour before high, the water will be up here. We want to draw those mullet in, in, in and amongst all the snags we've got here. And what's nice, this bread, this all this liquidised bread, we, it would all get caught up in the weed and cracks and sort of works like you would with like an onion sack really. And then that should be enough to kickstart the swim when they come in. And then it's just a case of little and often, like match tactics, little and often when you're casting over your float. It's looking good down there though. Lovely colour. what it's all about. Beautiful mullet on the float. Just filming Lawrence and I stopped to have a little go myself and uh, along came this one from uh, out under a weed bed and nailed me bait. Gave a cracking fight. Absolutely stoked with this fish. Chuffed. So you're fishing away, you've had a bite, you struck it, and now you've got a fish on. What to expect? Well, mullet fight very, very strongly. They can go on long runs, they can sulk along the bottom. They'll even jump sometimes, which is quite a sight. But the main thing is just to be patient. Let the mullet have line when it wants to take it and bring it back into range when you can. Don't be in too much of a rush to net it, but when the opportunity comes, 
make sure you don't stab at it with the net and take it easy. You want to wear the fish out because you want it to be tired on land, then they're much easier to deal with. Uh, like I said before, I don't play fish off the drag. A lot of these small freshwater reels that we use, the drags are not made for saltwater and they can seize up over time. So I prefer to play fish by backwinding. That way I, I've got ultimate control over giving line and bringing line in. That's just the way I prefer to do it. And I don't lose many fish doing it, so I feel like um, if there's one tip you can take away that really might help you with your fishing, that might be one of them. So once you've got your mullet on land, keep it in the net, wet your hands and handle it gently. Be aware that their scales are quite delicate, so try not to do anything that might dislodge them. Generally, mullet won't be deep hooked, so getting the hook out is not an issue. If you want to take a photo, it's a good idea to just give the fish a little breather between setting the camera up and all that sort of thing. Keep it in the net, put it in some water, get some fresh water over its gills, and you should find that it goes back in really good condition. Okay, so you've got your tackle sorted, now what about approach? Why would you choose float fishing over, say, ledgering, which is arguably easier? Well, float fishing suits some spots more than others. If you're doing a lot of fishing close in, you've got a fair depth of water right at your feet, some features there, float fishing's a natural choice. You've got a spot with a lot of features to navigate around, you know, rocks and weeds, that sort of thing. Again, float fishing is excellent for that. On top of that, Float fishing is just a fun and engaging visual form of angling. If you're anything like me, you do a lot of fishing on the bottom and the rest of your sea fishing, and a chance to fish another method is, is welcome, especially one that enables you to cover as much water and explore the space as efficiently as float fishing. It can be very effective. What about actually fishing your float? Do you let it dead drift? Do you hold it back? Well, most of the time, I'm dead drifting my float. I let the current take it. Occasionally I'll hold it back. I'm not shy of moving it about. I'll, I'll reel it in and drop it into another spot if I feel it's not where I want it to be. But part of the appeal of it is that your bait acts very naturally and you can explore a wide variety of ground very quickly, very easily. So, mullet bites. What are the indications that mullet give when they take your bait? Well, you can sort of put them into two main categories, really. There's the lift bite and the pull-down bite. Both of those are pretty self-explanatory. But in practice, there's a whole range of indications that mullet give when they take the bait, ranging from the very, very subtle to the outright bizarre. Um, it's something that you'll find yourself getting tuned into as you go along. Uh, sometimes you'll find yourself just striking and hooking a fish without even really being able to describe what made you strike or being able to describe the bite indication it's almost like a sixth sense in a way um, and that that kind of comes with experience really of course mullet fishing sometimes you miss a lot of bites um, it's not always consistent sometimes you'll have days where you'll you'll have three bites and hook three fish other times you'll have 40 bites and hook one or two fish uh, the only thing you can really do when you, you're sort of struggling to hit the bites is try a few tactical things and just just keep your head keep your patience sooner or later if you just keep soldiering on your hook one. So what water conditions are best for float fishing for mullet? Well I tend to find that coloured water fish is best. It doesn't have to be mega coloured, just a tinge sometimes is enough, just as long as the water isn't bell clear. Because in those sort of conditions you'll tend to find the mullet are on their guard and they're quite difficult to catch. As far as atmospheric conditions go you'll tend to find that cloudy days out fish sunny ones. Still catch fish on sunny days, but it tends to be when there's a fair bit of colour in the water and the fish are a bit more relaxed. What you'll probably find is that mullet really don't like those days where it's going from sunny to cloudy quite fast and quite often. It really seems to put them off the feed. So bear that in mind when you're picking days to fish. So I hope you've enjoyed this overview of float fishing for mullet and it helps you out with your own fishing and helps you get into a few fish of your own. If you've got any questions or anything that you'd like to add, please do so in the comments and let's discuss these things. There's no such thing as too much information when it comes to mullet fishing. Above all, what I'd like to say is that this is a really fun and challenging way of fishing and it gives you a lot of room to be creative and develop your own style. And that's a great thing in Anglin, I think. 
If you have any inclination at all to try this out, then I strongly urge you to give it a go. It's great fun, and I think that you'll love it.